All right, guys, thanks for showing up for training today. Today, we're going to be going over how to write an offer that wins. Who would like to get? It's not showing. What the hell? Thank you. One second, technical difficulties. POG chair. It was up there, wasn't it? All right, one more time, because I'm recording this. I'm going to put this on our YouTube channel. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for showing up to training today. We are talking about how to write an offer that wins. Question to you guys is, who would like to get their offers accepted a lot easier and a lot faster? Everybody, right? Um, so we're going to go over that, guys. We're going to go over tips and strategies on how to get your offer accepted faster, how to win more offers, and what we're not going to go over today is like how to write a contract, right? This is not like a purchase contract training. Um, so let me just state that first. If you want to learn the purchase contract, what's the best way to learn the purchase contract? Doing it and what else? What's well, something you could do every single day? You can read it, right? So the way that I learned the listing agreement and the purchase contract was I printed one out and I stapled it and I had it with me and I would just read through it line by line. I would highlight it. I would read it a bunch of times. And after you read that thing 10, 20 times, you're going to know it. Right. Um, Cause there's a lot of stuff on there that you don't know what it means. Right. So that's where you can maybe Google ask somebody, Hey, what does this thing mean? But the more that you know, the contract, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Cause your clients are going to have these questions as well. So this is not that training, but that's your guys' homework. If you want to get better at working with buyers, you need to know the contract inside and out. Even if you're working with sellers, you need to know the purchase contract inside and out as well. Because when you receive an offer, um, there's all kinds of little boxes that can be checked. And good agents who know the contract will take advantage of agents who don't know the contract. And I've had agents try to do that on me many times, and I caught it, like, um, I had an agent like check this little box. There was like a little hidden box that says contingencies do not get removed until the deal closes. So on uh, initial on her, the beginning of the contract, they took that off. Actually, it's no longer there. This is an old contract, right? They've revised it since then. But before you would put like your contingency periods and then like a few pages after there was a little box that you could check. Right. And so if you didn't know the contract and you just like saw the other stuff, you're like, all right, 10 day contingency. Cool right? And then you accept that offer, like you're bound to that contract, right? Um, so if you're representing your seller, you know, you're not doing a good job by protecting them if you don't know the contract, right? So that's your disclaimer. You need to read the contract through in, throughout and understand it. Um, so let's go over how to write an offer that wins. Okay. So what are we going to go over today? Uh, first thing is going to be setting expectations with our buyers. You need to set the right expectations with your buyers. We'll dive into that. Um, how to get an advantage with the listing agent, right? If you have an advantage with the listing agent, you're going to be able to convert more and move further along and use that to your use that knowledge and information to your advantage for your buyer. Um, preparing your offer fast. The market moves fast. So what are some things you can do to prepare your offer a lot faster? And then presenting your offer to win. And then at the end, we'll do a little bit of role play as well. Um, feel free to stop me at any time. Feel free to uh, ask questions. Feel free to chime in. Feel free to add anything you've ran into because that will be effective and helpful for everybody else that's watching the training. Um, okay, let's go. So setting the right expectations with your buyer. Why is this important, guys? Why is it important that you set the right expectations with your buyer? Who can tell me? So you're all on the same page. Definitely one of those, right? What else? so they can know what they're getting themselves into so we're all on the same page and i think most importantly so that you can get your buyer to listen to you when you want them to increase their price change their terms or anything like that right so if you don't set the right expectations from the beginning um, and you kind of throw stuff on them later on while you're in the process of writing the offer and negotiating it's a lot harder to get the client to agree to do stuff 
when you're kind of surprising them with stuff, right? So a good agent will prepare their client early on in the process and kind of let them know what it's going to be like, you know, let them know what they're getting themselves into, the things that you guys said, so that when it's time to make something happen, the client is already prepared for that and they they are more inclined to make it happen, right? So that's number one, right? So if you don't set the right expectations, you're going to have an uphill battle, especially when the market's competitive and there's multiple offers that you're going against. You need every little piece of uh, edge that you can have, right? So in order to set the right expectations with your buyer, you need to understand what their motivation is before anything. You cannot get someone to do something if you don't know why they're doing it, right? If you don't know why they're trying to buy a home or if you don't know what this means to them, or if you don't know their current situation, or if you've been very just kind of surface level with your client, you haven't really gone deep and asked the right questions and really figure out what they're thinking, where their head's out, where their head's at, you know, you won't be able to use that to your advantage. You won't be able to push them, you know, gently towards their goals if you don't know why they're doing it. So a good rule of thumb is make sure you're always like asking what the motivation is or make sure you're reinforcing what the motivation is. In your buyer consultation, there should be like a good amount of time spent on, hey, why are you buying a home? What does this mean to you? What does it mean if you can't buy a home? What's your living situation now, right? Um, why is it important that you're in these schools? Why is it important that you get a bigger home? Whatever the reasons that they tell you, and then go a step further, right? What does that mean to you? What is your situation like? What is your pain, the pain or the problem that you're trying to fix or solve right now? Um, because that's really the, the majority of really building rapport with your client, right? If you know what their issues are and what you're trying to solve, that's like half the battle right there, right? And if they know that you are trying to help them solve these problems and help them move forward with their goals, they're going to trust you more. So you need to understand their motivation. Um, another one is review the market conditions early on. I can't tell you how many times I've seen agents, they meet with the client, they do a consult maybe, and they don't really go into depth of what's happening in the market. And then they go show homes and then it's time to write an offer. And it's like sticker shock, right? The client is like blown away off. Like, I didn't know it was this competitive. I didn't know the house was going to have 10 offers. I didn't know people are going 50,000 over asking, 100,000 over asking, or I didn't know we have to remove all our contingencies and what that means. So when that happens later on, you've done all, you've kind of wasted a bunch of time, right? Whereas if you would have had that conversation early on, then you would have put the client at a decision. The client could have said, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. Or the client says, okay, I understand. Now show me how to navigate this, right? So you need to review the market conditions early on. Um, when you're doing your console or even while you're shopping for homes, you need to pull up the data. You need to make sure they always know what's happening how competitive the market is, is it multiple offer situation, and um, what they're getting themselves into basically, right? So that you can push them forward when you need to push them forward. Um, give them an idea of what it's like to write an offer, right? Like what's the process of writing an offer? Like if you're a brand new first time home buyer, like, like do I show up and like write on a piece of paper? Like, do I go meet the seller? Like, do I just tell you, hey, this is my offer? Like, and then you tell them, you know, like, how does it work, right? So you want to make sure like you're, pretend like you're you're helping like a three-year-old child figure this out, right? And keep, make, simplify it for them, right? Show them what it's like, give them the, the, the basics of, hey, like, you know, we're going to go look at homes. This is what's going to happen. This is what the offer looks like. This is what I do during the process. Give them an idea of what the process is going to be like this way later on when you're saying, hey, remember I told you about that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, this is where we're at right now. Okay, that makes sense. Let's move forward. There's a lot less resistance up front when you're doing that. Um, here's another one that's important, extremely important. Always prepare them for a counter offer or them having to improve their price or improve their terms. Always worst case scenario, this is what's going to happen. Or hey, more than likely, this is what's going to happen. Because if you prep someone like, hey, we're going to submit an offer, but we're probably going to get counteroffered and we're probably going to have to come up in price. It's a lot easier for them to digest that early on. So 
that later on when you do ask them to come up in price, they're not surprised again, right? Versus doing it when it's actually time to write the offer, right? And they're like, what, what do you mean? Right, like that was my final price, right? Um, so always prep them for a counter offer. And then what happens if you don't get a counter offer? How do you look? Savior. You look like the savior, right? You look like the rock star, right? Like, hey, I prepped you that you might have to come up 50 grand, but you know what? We actually just got your offer accepted the way it is. Thank you so much, right? Like you really, you know, helped us out versus the other way around. Like, hey, you didn't prep us. You didn't, you know, tell us what was going to happen. Now I'm sticker shock. Now I'm upset with you, right? Or now I'm disappointed in the, in the process. And then that falls back on you as the agent. Here's the other thing. It's not just about raising your offer and increasing your terms. You got to understand what the payment options are. So why is this important when someone's buying a home? Because at the end of the day, the people aren't buying the purchase price, right? Like if the house goes for a million or 1.1, like, yeah, that's the price that you're buying on the sticker, right? But at the end of the day, you're buying like the payment. What's the monthly payment? What does that mean to me every single month that I got to pay in principal interest, tax and insurance? When you go buy a car, yeah, you look at the price, but at the end of the day, like, well, let's sit down and what kind of payment are you comfortable with? That's what the car salesman does. It's the same thing here with real estate, with working with buyers, is you want to know what those payment options are. So what I would do is I would say, hey, we're going to submit this offer at a million, right? I think that's a competitive offer, but there's a high chance that we're going to get a counter offer. And they may ask us to come up another 25, another 50, maybe even 100,000. This is what the payments would look like. So I just want to prepare you to, you know, the difference for every 25,000, this is how much more the payment's going to go up, right? Your payment's around 5,000 now. It might be 5,100, 5,200, whatever it might be. And so you're already kind of future pacing that. You're already giving them an idea of what's going to happen. And so it's a lot easier for them to process and understand payments versus dollars on the price. Does that make sense? And then later on, when they're like stuck on like not wanting to come up in price and you say, hey, you know what? It's only a hundred bucks more on your payment. And you, so you start focusing on, can you afford a hundred bucks more to get your dream home? Or, hey, your motivation was to move out of this two bedroom and get into a four bedroom because your family is like outgrown their house. Is it worth a hundred dollars more to you, you know, to get this four bedroom and really give your family the home that they deserve? You see how now I'm using their motivation and I'm using the payment. I'm not talking about like the price or anything like that. That's how you'll be able to kind of uh, get your client to move forward in those situations where you do have to negotiate. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. What questions do you have about setting the right expectations? So would it make sense? Because uh, you're already assuming the uh, for a counter offer, right? Mm -hmm. So would it make sense to have like each counter offer that you think you might get back and have it in writing for them to look at? Um, I don't necessarily think you should like type them up and have them in writing, but I think you should at least be able to break down whether it's like on a paper or something, or at least you give them an idea or you at least have a conversation yes. with them. But remember, if you send in that offer, you're waiting for the seller to counter offer you, right? So if the seller counter offers you, then they're going to send you back a counter offer in writing, and then you present it to your client at that point. All you're doing is just kind of presenting scenarios to them, right? This is what is likely to happen. But we're going to do our best to keep it right here where you want it, but this is the worst case scenario, right? And so starting to get them mentally prepared for that. Any other questions, comments, or feedback on that? Uh, something that came up recently when I was writing an offer, my client was asking me, Mauricio, uh, how do you believe that the listing agent is telling us there's 10 other offers and that the prices are real? So our price point is at like 615. Mm -hmm. And uh, the listing agent said we're like in the top three. But my, my client was just like, how do you even know that's true? How do you alleviate like their concerns, something like that? So the question is, how do you, the client is asking like, how do we even know there's other offers on the table? Um, it's, you don't really know, to be honest, right? Because the agent doesn't technically have to show you like, hey, look at all my offers, right? Here's the six offers that I got. That's not the way it works. But what you can know and what you can look at is you can look at the market activity, right? So you can pull up the data and you can say, hey, look at the last three homes that sold, sold in seven days, right? On average. So that means they put the house on the market today, uh, on Monday and by Sunday, they accepted an offer. That tells me that there's a lot of activity in this area. So can the agent be stretching the truth? Yeah, maybe. Maybe they only have three offers and they're saying they have five to make it look more competitive. It's all negotiations, right? 
but the data kind of backs that up. And if we look at the trends in the history, it's, it's pretty likely that they have multiple offers. Also, when we went to the open house, there was a ton of people there. Or also when I showed you this property, did you see all the business cards that were on top of the table? That means a lot of people are showing this property, right? So you got to more show them, not necessarily tell them, right? Does that answer your question? All right, let's move forward, guys. Uh, so you set the right expectations. Now, getting an advantage with the listing agent. This is extremely important, right? So setting the right expectations with your client is important, but this is probably the other part that's extremely important as well. Um, because the more that you can create a relationship with the listing agent, the better chance you're going to have to make the deal happen. So I wrote the first line I wrote there is you must get the agent to like you, right? It's huge. You've got to get the agent to like you. How would you get an agent to like you? What are some ideas? So, um, care about show how much you really care. How would you show how much you really care? Okay. So there you go. So it's through your communication, through your interest that you're showing, through getting information, right? Um, yeah, that's that's all part of it. Any other ideas? How do you get an agent to like you? Uh, build rapport with them. Build rapport, right? So you build rapport by having conversations, by finding common ground, right? Now, if you wanted to like really get some ammunition to build rapport, what could you do? What's something in your control that you can do to find out more about the agent? Look them up, right? Social media, pull up their stats, Google them, pull them up on Zillow, do your homework on someone, right? See if they have a, fa a Facebook and Instagram, see, um, go on the MLS, see how many homes they've sold, right? See if they mainly work with sellers. Do they mainly work with buyers, right? Get as much information as possible. Maybe see if they're like part of some sort of, you know, community or organization that maybe you have an association with. Or maybe see who your common friends are on social media, right? So that's what I do is before I contact the listing agent, if I know my client wants to write an offer on that home, I'm like, all right, now I got to figure out how I'm going to weasel my way in, right? What's my angle here? And I start doing my homework, right? Same thing when we get agents that want to come interview with us, right, to join our team. I look all you guys up on Instagram and Facebook. And sometimes I like what I see. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't see anything. And I'm like, okay. That's probably why their business is not booming because I don't see anything about them, right? So you always want to do a little bit of research on somebody so that you can know how to frame your conversation. You can know what stuff to bring up, emphasize. And that's really what it's all about is people want to do business with people that they like and that they trust, right? And the way that they're going to like you and trust you is by showing interest, right? Talking about the property, doing your research on them, saying, hey, uh, I looked you up on Facebook. I would even say that, hey, I looked you up on Facebook, right? And uh, I see you're friends with so-and-so, right? He's one of my buddies. He used to work at Intero or whatever, right? Like bring that up. And then they're like, oh yeah, I know him. Like he's hella cool. Oh yeah, we went to high school together. And then before you know it, now you guys are like chopping it up about where you're from, where you grew up at. And then now you're not just some random buyer's agent that's trying to get their offer accepted. Now you're like a friend, right? You know, in, in some way or uh, some form. So you want to figure out how you can build that relationship. Be like, stand out, like say something funny, compliment them, right? Like if it's an agent who like crushes it, I would give them a compliment. Everybody loves compliments, right? If you're like, man, hey, I looked you up. You sell a ton of houses, man. Like, congratulations. I saw that one you sold on uh, 123 Main Street. That house was dope, bro. Like, how'd you get that listing? And then what do successful agents like to do? They like to talk about themselves, right? You know, and a lot of people like, if you're a successful agent, that means you're working hard. So a lot of people like to just talk about the hustle, the grind, and like, you know, what it is like to be in the business, right? So find that common ground. Look at a sale and like compliment them on their sale. Hey, I noticed you get a lot of listings, man. I'm really trying to step it up in listings. Any tips or advice that you can give me? So what you do is you kind of get the agent to be on your side, right? And when someone's on your side, they're like, man, I like this guy. or I like this girl. They start to internally root for you right? They start to say, okay, let me figure out how I can make it work on the offer, right? And that's the competitive advantage that you'll have over the agent who's just really black and white, right? Hey, this is Enrique and my client wants to write an offer on your home. How many offers do you have? Like, I don't really want to work with that person, right? 
I did, I did a lot of listings. Um, I've sold personally over close to 200 listings myself, right? 200. So how many calls was I getting from buyer agents? A lot, a lot, like begging, pleading, like everything, you name it, right? Like, Hey, can I take you out to lunch? Hey, can I do this? Hey, please get my client's offer accepted. And I will tell you that 90% of the time I would do business with the ones that I liked, right? Because they like, I can see like their hustle, their grit, the follow-up. I can tell that they were on it. They would call me, they would chop it up. They would do stuff. They would separate themselves from the rest who were just like, hey, I'm submitting an offer on your home, right? You know, and then I would, obviously if their offer was a good one and I like them, then I'm like, dude, I'd rather work with you, bro. Like if I'm gonna have to work with you for the next 30 days, I'd rather work with someone who's cool than someone like I don't really know or get along with, right? Because you're going to be in a relationship for the next 30, even longer if it takes longer, right? Um, you want to do your research on the property and the comps, right? So when you call them and also read the MLS, that's extremely important. I cannot tell you how many times I would be annoyed by agents who would call and ask me a question and it's clearly on the MLS. Hey, do you have disclosures? And I'm like, did you read the MLS? It says disclosures will be out tomorrow at noon and it says email this person if you want the disclosures oh my bad i didn't see that right and i'm like dude i already know what it's going to be like like how you do one thing is how you do everything you're not that detailed in your business mr agent are you right and so like listing agents like they worked hard to get that listing right because listings take a while to get so they want to make sure they're working with someone who's like on the ball right so you got to show them that you're on the ball by following instructions by reading the mls it's okay to confirm, hey, I read the MLS. It looks like, like I would even say this, hey, I read the MLS. It looks like you're taking offers on Thursday at one. I just want to make sure that's still correct. What does that say to the agent? Oh, okay, you read it. Like, okay, he read it. Like my, my dude's on the ball, right? Like he's, he's, he's paying attention, you know what I mean? Um, and then I can, you know, kind of get my, my, my foot in the door from there, right? Hey, it looks like uh, disclosures will be ready tomorrow. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and send an email to your assistant. It looks like those are the instructions here. Just wanted to confirm that that's correct. And then I would pull something up. Hey, I noticed there was a room, you know, that's unpermitted. Anything you can tell me about that, right? Because I read the disclosures or I looked at the comments or I looked through the photos and that's showing the agent like that I'm on it, you know? And then doing your research on the comps, right? Uh, hey, just curious, you know, how did you price this property? I did some research on the comps. I know there's one down the street that's active. I know there's one down the street that just sold for this price. I'm just curious, did you are those the comps you're using to kind of come up with your list price? Once again, you're showing the agent like, I'm on it, right? I'm on the ball. I know my stuff, right? People want to work with people who know their stuff. Um, ask what the seller expects and ask how they like to work. Right. I always ask that when I contact the listing agent. Hey, Mr. Listing Agent, um, just curious, what is your seller expecting from this? You know, what is, is there anything they're looking for? Anything that I should include in my offer that would, you know, appease your seller or be an advantage to your seller? And they'll tell you, like, hey, they need a rent back, or hey, no, they just want the highest price, or whatever it might be. And all that little information you're going to use that when preparing your offer. Also, I would ask them, how do you like to work? Hey, how do you typically go about offers? Do you just kind of take the highest offer? Do you do counter offers? Do you do an offer due date? What's your style, Mr. Uh, listing agent? This way I can, you know, play my cards right. You know, and they're going to tell you. Some agents are like, nope, all offers are due on this day. We're going to do counter offers and I'll get back to you if you're in the top three. Some agents are like, well, just send them in. And I look at them as they come, right? So then I know, okay, this is a different strategy. If it's just to send it in, whenever, then I want to send an offer in as quick as possible and blow everybody out the water and try to swoop that property up. If I know it's going to be like offer due date and there's expecting multiple offers, then I'm kind of waiting to the end to kind of see where they're at and trying to get as many, as much information as I can so I can get my offer in right when it's due and make it stand out, right? And give me a little bit of a competitive advantage. Um, use video, right? How do you build rapport with someone? We can talk on the phone, but if I follow that up with a quick video, right? Hey, Dan, it's Enrique. We just spoke, man. I just want to say it was awesome talking to you. Hey, that's pretty dope how we both knew so-and-so from high school. Um, I'm going to work on an offer, man, but be on the lookout for me. We're going to work together. 
what would that do to the relationship? Mostly. Right? They get to see a face to the name. They get to see that, you know, you're hustling, you're in the office, you're out in the field, whatever it might be. They get to see your personality. You're not just someone they spoke to over the phone, right? Now it's actually a real person, right? So video, simple. I made that up right on the fly, 10 second video. But that, remember, we're fighting for inches a lot of times, right? When there's multiple offers, it's these little things that give you the advantage. So you want to use that as much as possible. If you're a pretty girl, and you send a video to a guy that's a listing agent, you're gonna get even more of an advantage, right? If you're a handsome dude, right? And it's an older listening, oh, he's handsome, right? Whatever it might be. <laughs> like, dude, you gotta use what you can, right? Or if you're a good talker, like good talk, be a good talker, right? Or give them a compliment, right? Whatever it might be, like just you gotta use your personality to your advantage, right? Like that goes a long way in sealing that relationship. And it's really all about relationships. Um, back in the days before there was so much technology, like offers were really done like handshake type of deals. Like you would go meet the seller at their house. Like you would be the, the agent, you would bring your buyer and you would show up to the house and they would sit down at the kitchen table with their agent and with the seller. And it would be all like, Hey, let's, let's, let's go over the numbers and build the relationship. That's how it was done back in the days. Or you go to their office. Now we got technology, everything's like DocuSign, like email, like I don't even want to talk to you. You have your mask on. Like it's it's like the the people relationship has kind of been separated by technology. But remember, at the end of the day, we're still people, right? We are still people and we love to vibe out with other cool, like-minded people, right? Would you go to their office? You can. Yeah. I had an agent. Uh, actually, I sold a house in... Los Gatos, it was like a $3 million house. And I went and presented the offer at the agent's office. The agent had an office there and I took my client and I went there to the office and I asked her, hey, is it cool if we come to your office and present our offer? My seller really likes this home and I want you to meet her because she's really nice. Can we come out and present the offer? We went to the office, we talked to her and we got our offer accepted, right? Over multiple offers. That was the difference. No one else did that, right? So you can ask, most agents will probably say no nowadays, but there's still some old school agents. If they're older, they're like, they remember that back in the days. They're like, yeah, come through. I want to meet you. And then now you can charm someone way better in person than like just through phone and text and email, right? Because now you're a real, a real person. Um, so all of this stuff that you're doing guys, and I'm spending so much time on this because this is probably one of the most important pieces out of all of this, right? Is you are showing them what it's like to work with you. When you do all of this stuff, you are letting them know this is how I work and this is what it's going to be like to work with me throughout the process, right? Because there's a risk that every listing agent is taking. They are taking a risk that if they take your offer and you don't know what the hell you're doing or you butcher it or you didn't set the right expectations with your buyer and then now your buyer wants to cancel, that can ruin the whole entire deal. So there's always a gamble that a listing agent takes when they choose an offer. Like, let's say you two have the same exact offer. I'm gambling, right? Like, who's the better agent? Who did a better job with their buyer, right? Who set the right expectations? Is your buyer fully 100% on board? Maybe they wrote the same offer and his buyer is 100% on board because he did all this stuff and his buyer is prepped and ready and he's a really educated buyer. And then your buyer is like, you didn't do any of this. And then, Two weeks later, they want to back out. But you guys wrote the same exact offer, price and terms. So it's a gamble, right? It's a gamble, like, is the deal going to go through smoothly? That's why you have to show people what it's like to work with you before they start working with you. Does that make sense? Any questions on this, guys? All right. Let's rock. Okay. Preparing your offer fast. This is pretty self-explanatory, but here's the reason. Why would you want to prepare your offer fast? Because the market moves fast, right? Thanks, Jackie. Um, right? So if if you're getting caught up on like taking forever to prepare your offer and like offers are due later today and like it takes you hours and hours to prepare your offer, you're already at a disadvantage over someone else who's like built out systems, right? And they just can make an offer come out quickly. Um so oftentimes you must move fast because the market moves fast, right? So if you go see a home today and your client's ready to go, 
you want to get to pen to paper as quick as possible. So that's where you want to make sure you think about your offer preparation as a system. You're not starting from scratch every single time you prepare an offer. Um, you want to create email, uh, te offer templates in zip forms. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's really easy. There's probably videos on that, but you want to go into your zip forms and just have templates already created where 99% of the information is already filled out. And all you got to do is plug in your price, your terms, the property address and your client's information, right? But like your name, your brokerage name, all those little things, all those little boxes that are standard that need to be checked. All those things are already ready to go. And you literally just hit a button and the offer is like halfway done, right? Because it moves that fast, right? In a competitive market. You want to have email templates in Gmail um, for you to prepare your offer as well, right? When you send out your offer, you want to have a certain a template already with like your cover sheet, your cover letter, maybe your bio, all, all those things. And I'll show you an example of that um, so that you can move fast with the offer, right? Um, so you want to have like a step-by-step -step way that you do your offers and like it's the same way every single time with every single buyer. So it's a duplicatable process. When you go to McDonald's, they don't do the Big Mac different every single time, right? The Big Mac is the Big Mac, right? Like it, they follow a process and that's how they're able to pump out millions of Big Macs a day all over the, you know, the world. So you got to think of your offers like that because the quicker you can get this offer out and submitted, the faster you can now go help your other client, right? And when you want to have multiple deals working, you got to be able to have systems and process and work faster, right? That's just the bottom line. There's some agents that don't get a lot done just simply because they're slow. Like from when it needs to get done to when they make it happen, it's like hours. Or there's the other agents that are like, the client said yes, within 15 minutes, the offer's already ready. And now they're already working on getting that thing signed. And now they're working on getting it submitted to the listing agent. And now they can go on their other appointment that they have or the other agent that's like, I got an offer. They take all day to get their offer. And then like they stop prospecting. They don't go on their other appointment. Like they don't do the other things they need to do because like it took me all day to write this offer. Right? No, that's not how you want to do it. Um, and then here's another uh, tip is you always want to review the offer with your buyer before signing it. So don't ever just prepare an offer and send it to your clients to sign because they don't know what they're signing, right? Jump on a quick call with them. Jump on a quick Zoom once it's prepared and say, hey, I want to go through the offer and I want to make sure you know what you're signing. I want to make sure it's, you know, it's what we talked about. You're going to do your offer consult or whatever it might be, but always run through the actual purchase contract and make sure you explain what each page means, why you check these boxes. This way, when I send it for DocuSign, if that's, that's, that's what you're using, I don't have to go like, they're not going to spend all this time trying to figure out what everything means. And then some clients don't want to sign it. Right. So it sounds simple guys, but think about it. If you want to do like hundreds and hundreds of sales, like all these little things give you an advantage. Right. So always explain. Do you have any questions? No. Is this clear? Okay. Let's go to the next page. Do you have any questions? No, it's clear. Boom. All right. Great. I'm sending this over to DocuSign right now. Just go ahead and sign it. Anything comes up, let me know. And now you can get your buyers to move forward faster. Any questions on this? Um, so I'll show you an example. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go to my email real quick. So if I wanted to prepare an offer, I'm not doing a lot of offers lately, but I still have this built out. So I would just pull up my email. I have a, te uh, a template already built in. Um, and it's called offer for property. So I just click that button. Boom. My template pops up. Right. Like this is what I've used all the time. And it's the same template over and over that I've been using for like years and years and years. And it's basically, um, it's in the wrong place, but hello agent right here. Offer for property. I'll put one, two, three main street. I'll even write something like pick me, right? Something to make my email subject stand out or I'll write like the best offer for one, two, three main street, pick me. You won't regret it. Some shit like that. Because then the, they're like, damn, like that's kind of creative, right? Like no one's done that. So you got to think like a marketer, right? So still that, right? So next time you write an offer in the subject line, the best offer for one, two, three main street, pick me. You won't regret it. 
I guarantee you, like, they're going to just look at you a little bit different. Hey, that was, and they talked to you on the phone. Hey, Jackie, that was pretty cool what you did, right? And then, like, I like you a little bit more now, so now I'm going to help you out a little bit more so you can win, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's basically, please find the attached offer for your listing at, and I just fill in the address. This is standard. My clients fell in love with the home and are excited for, at the opportunity to call it theirs. Every email I send says they fell in love with the home, right? Uh, a little bit about my clients. And then I'll just plug in like a, a sentence or two about them, a little bit of a bio, a little bit about myself. This never changes, right? I've been, I probably need to update this. I've been in the industry for this many years. I have a track record. I take pride in this. I also have a team that makes it all happen. My preferred lender, Jason, has been in the business for this many years as well. Here's his phone number. If you choose to work with us, I can guarantee an efficient and seamless process. Check out my team's reviews. We have over 500 five-star reviews. Check out my lender's reviews. He has over this many reviews. Here's the links. Am I separating myself from most agents by doing that? Right? And then what I do is I give them an offer summary in the email. I make it easy just for them to look at this one page and like see like what the offer is all about. I put the price, the down payment, my contingencies. Is there any other terms? And then look at even this one. I We realize the offer is below list price. My clients do not wish to offend your sellers. My clients feel comfortable at this price for their budget. Nonetheless, we're open to reaching a win-win if that, you know, for all parties. And then I tell them what I'm attaching. Attach documents, purchase contract, disclosures, the pre-approval letter, uh, proof of funds. And then my clients were already pre-approved with this other lender. They have this one. Please confirm receipt. Please let me know if there's anything else we need to make this a win-win, anything like that. So this is a system, right? This is a system where like, I don't sit there and got to type the email up. It's like, boom, I just kind of fill in the blanks, tweak it a little bit and go from there. And I can get my offers out extremely fast. Who in here needs to add this to their process? Okay, who in here maybe got an idea like their subject line or something, right? I want you guys to try it. A template for us. There you go. Yeah. So, and how did I learn this? Is because when I was a listing agent, I would get see all these offers that come in. I literally we would get some where they scan the document, and then you know when you scan, and then sometimes it has like a crazy file number. That would be the subject line, and it wouldn't even say the property address. It wouldn't say anything, and it wouldn't have anything here. It, it wouldn't even have like their uh their signature, right? It would just be like file number 0127X, whatever. And then I would open the PDF and then it was an offer that was like, looked really bad because their copier sucked. And I'm like, who is this agent? Like who sent me this offer? I've never talked to them before. Like, okay, that's how they work. I already know what it's going to be like to work with them during the process. Right. Yeah. You guys get the hint. Um, Okay, last part here, presenting your offer to win. So the question you got to ask yourself is, have you established a connection with the listing agent, right? And you don't establish the connection with the listing agent by just calling one time when it's time to write the offer. You call before you're going to show the home, right? If you are like, you kind of already know if your client's going to like this home, right? Because if you've done a good job of meeting with your client, figuring out the criteria, you already know, like it's in their budget. They're probably this is a contender, right? And so, even if they don't end up going with that home, you still want to call the agent because you want to build a relationship because you may run into them on another property or another client or whatever it might be. So, I'd call the listing agent before I show the home. Hey, what's up, John? Hey, it's Enrique PRG. Hey, man, I, I think you're friends with so and so. Um, you know, he's one of my buddies. He's in your office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me. Hey, I'm gonna go show your home on one, two, three Main Street. Right. Just wanted to check in with you, man. Like, what should I know about this home? Anything that stands out, anything that's not on the MLS, you know, anything your client's expecting. I, I did read the MLS. I saw, you know, when it offers are due, what can you tell me? Right. So I'm building that rapport with him already. You know, I will say <clears throat> my voice stayed off. <clears throat> I will say something small that I did. I didn't think it mattered at all. Mm -hmm. It was a really older uh, listing agent. I just saved his phone number, Marcus. Yeah. And he called me to talk about we're the top three. And I would answer the phone like, hey, Marcus. And he's like, wow, I'm so honored to save my number. No one does that anymore. And I was like, that's like standard to me. I didn't know that was a big deal. But it's like little things that sometimes older people appreciate. Yeah. You save their number. They call you back. And you're like, hey, Marcus. Hey, John. Like, oh, shoot. How do you know my number? Right? Yeah. Whatever it might be. Especially if that's like a top agent. Like, you know, they do a lot of listings. 
why wouldn't you want them in your phone book? I've seen right? um, Urban. One time he didn't know the agent, but he's like, oh, I like the agent. He's like, hey, uh, Samantha, I have your phone number. Just come by the park. Well, I go, how are you? And then he's like, oh, like, hey, hey. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go right that's where your yeah that's where your sales skills come in the in the play right and i would even make something up like hey weren't you at that one event like with so and so right and they're like no oh okay i must be mistaking you from someone else but you do a lot of business you know i see your name all the time and then like boom you're like you're chopping it up now right and you kind of break the ice it's an icebreaker right and it's not just business remember it's relationships so have you established the connection with the listing agent is what you need to ask yourself before you present the offer so you want to call them before. If you show the property and you know your client likes that property, I would call them after. Hey, man, I just showed your property. Awesome listing. Like, compliment them. Dude, like, you guys did a great job at staging this. Um, you're going to be seeing an offer from us. Hey, just curious, you know, is this more or less what you guys are looking for? Kind of reiterate. Now I've talked to them one time. I've talked to them two times. I sent them a video. That's three times, right? When I'm going to prepare the offer, while I'm working on preparing the offer, I'm going to call them again, right? Call them again. Hey, John, it's Enrique again. I'm actually preparing an offer right now, right? And I just want to know, like, offer expiration date. Like, when, you know, how soon can you get back to me, right? Is is 24 hours good enough, right? Um, hey, I know you said no contingencies, man. I'm actually working on an offer with no contingencies, right? Um, I'm trying to get my price, right? Do you have any other offers right now? This is now where you're like, you're in that little negotiation that, little hustle right at, at the end where you're trying to find out as much information. But by that time, this is the fourth time I've already connected with you. called before called after I showed it, sent the video. Now I'm calling again. Right. So now I have four against however many times the other agents connected, which most agents only call one time. Right. If that, or they make, they might send an email, right. Or they send a text. Do you have any offers on this home? Really informal but I've already talked to them or connected with them four times. I'm standing out out of everybody, all right? And you also wanna sell your clients to the agent, right? So when you're on the phone with them, hey man, let me tell you about these buyers. Awesome young couple, you know, this is where I met them from. I've been working with them. Like I'm really rooting for them, man. If there's anything you can do to help us get our foot in the door, like I wanna work with you. You seem like an awesome agent. Um, and then sell yourself, right? Hey, I, you know, I can assure you I've been doing this for this long or my team and I have this been doing this. We have, you know, this many reviews or whatever a track record. Uh, hey, if you work with me, I'm going to make it a smooth process. I want to make this a win win for everybody. So I'm selling myself. Right. Earning points, earning points, earning points with with the listing agent. Um and then even try to find out if you're in the ballpark on price and terms. Right. Hey, where where do you think this is going to land? Right. You know, you always want to you always want to see what their opinion is on the price in terms. What do you think this is going to land? I see comps are here. You know, the market's kind of weird right now. Like, you know, John, where do you think it's going to land? Right? Sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't, but use that information to your advantage. Um or use it to kind of gauge. You know, we were thinking of coming in somewhere in this range. Don't say the exact price. Are we way off or are you think we're in the ballpark? Right? And if they're like, "Ooh, that's way too low." Right. And then that's kind of a sign or, Hey, you know what? Might be able to work with that. Then at least, you know, if you're, if you're close to the ballpark, sometimes you'll have agents that say, I can't tell you anything. Just send your offer in. Yeah. That happens. But even then that means you got to do a little, butter them up a little bit. Right. Hey, I know you can't tell me, but is it above this price or less than this <laughs> price? Right. You know? And then if you make it fun, like sometimes they'll start laughing. Right. And if they laugh, they lose. Right. If they laugh. And then you kind of already know, right? Hey, help me out. Come on. You know, I want to make this deal happen. I don't want to give you an offer that's not good. Does it need to be above 1.1, less than 1.2? At least, you know, bark twice if it, you know, or blink <laughs> twice, right? Like if, if I'm in the ballpark. Um, but use your charm, right? Use your charm. Make them laugh. You already built the rapport. That's going to help you get that little competitive advantage. The other thing is your offer must be clean and organized. I already showed you guys what the template looks like, right? So your offer needs to be super clean, super organized um, when you're presenting it. Um, and follow the instructions, right? If it says send your offers to this email, you need to send them to this email. If it says upload them here, upload them here. 
If it says you need to sign the disclosures before, sign the disclosures before, because remember the listing agent is in the driver's seat, right? And so if you've built rapport, if you there's a connection already, if your offer's in the ballpark and you follow the instructions, right? Um, and you're making it basically easy for them to work with you or showing them that it's going to be a great experience. Like these are all reasons why they should work with you or at least give you an opportunity to compete. If they have multiple offers, they'll tell you where the count, where the offers are at. I've had agents where like, I built so much rapport with them and they're like, Hey man, I want you to get this one. Like, just come up to this price. And like they wink, you know, they wink through the phone, right? If you come up to this price, it's yours. Right. I'd rather work with you than this other guy. He's a jerk. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, it happens because I'm like the way I'm talking to you guys right now, like this is how cool I am with people when I'm working with them. You know, it's the same vibe. Um, and then the other thing is um, get your loan agent involved. Right. This is your secret weapon. A lot of times the loan officer does not call the listing agent. I would say 90 percent of the time they don't. Uh, um, but we have our loan officers that we work with, whoever you're working with they need to be calling your client, the listing agent as well, and selling the financing portion of the deal, right? And you need to coach them. Don't just say, hey, Mr. Loan Officer, can you um, call them? You need to say, hey, can you call them and can you say this? Hey, can you let them know this? Can you recon reconfirm the stuff that I said, right, to this listing agent? Don't just like expect them to know what to say or how to say it like you do. Coach them on it, right? Hey, hey, whenever you work with me, you know, Mr. Loan Officer, like this is what I want you to say to the listing agents when you call them. It needs to be this way because this is how I present my deals, right? And that's you building kind of your reputation, your brand, your process, your system of how you do business. Um, and last but not least is make it easy for them to pick you, right? If your offer is clean, the terms are clean, you're not asking for a bunch of random stuff, right? Like make it an easy offer because the cleaner offers, it's a lot easier for them to present that to their seller. If your offer comes with all these like strings attached and all these different things you want them to do and all these hoops you want them to jump through, then they're like, man, your offer is not that good, right? Like, yeah, the price looks good, but if I got to do like 17 different things, you know, to make it work or different contingencies, then it's not that good of an offer. Everyone wants a clean and smooth offer, right? So when you're talking to your clients, you need to say, hey, I know you want like this thing to happen, but you know what? There's multiple offers and let's maybe just come in at a lower price instead of asking for all these like credits or kickbacks. And it's also going to depend on the market conditions too. When it's a really competitive market, you don't have room for that. When it's not as competitive, then maybe you can slip some of those things in, but do it strategically. So it still seems easy to read, to digest, to understand, and, and get your offer accepted. Any questions on this stuff, guys? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. You get an offer. Let's say you're you're listing a property for a million. You get an offer for like 1.1, uh -huh. 17 different contingencies, or you get your asking price with zero contingencies. What would you do? Um. It depends, right? Like, I mean, I'm I'm the type from a listing agent standpoint, I'm always going to counter offer. Like I counter offered every freaking offer. That was just part of my process. Like I'm always going to squeeze to see if I can get extra money for my seller, right? And that was one of the things that I sell in my listing presentation is most agents are just going to say, hey, pick the, you know, the best price and the best terms. Um, and I would say, hey, if I have more than one offer, that means we have a negotiation here, Right. So my job is to get this guy as high as possible, this guy as high as possible and see who's the clear winner, right? So I would go back and negotiate, either negotiate those terms away, right? Or get my other guy to raise his price. And then at the end, see, make sure everyone's at their highest and best price in terms and then pick who we want to work with, right? And so since you know that and you're on the buyer side, if you know how a top you know listing agent would handle it, then you already know, like, I got to make my offer good price and easy terms, right? That's going to, that's going to give you a competitive advantage if it's possible. Right. Um, so at the end of the day too, to make this great, you need to role play it, right? Like what I want you to role play. So anybody's watching the training is role play, like having that conversation with the listing agent, right? That initial one of you just chopping it up 
hey, what's up, man? You know, you did your research. You're trying to build a rapport, get those icebreakers. You're complimenting them. You're congratulating them on their, their new listing. You're telling them how nice the pictures look, kind of doing that stuff. And then you're asking like, hey, is there anything I should know? I'm going to be showing your property today. I want to confirm that this is on the MLS. Is there anything that, you know, I should go over uh, with my client when I'm showing the home, right? That's what you should role play because if you don't role play it, you can't just expect it to go well when you try to do it for the very first time, right? Um, so those of you guys watching the training, that's your homework to role play it. Um, and then those of us here, we're going to just go around the room and role play real quick. So we got five more minutes and we are done. 